Welcome Battle Brothers, I am the Epic Narrator and today we're going to be doing a how to speed paint with my Imperial Guard. Would you like to know more? These guys are heavily influenced by Starship Troopers and of course the old Rogue Trader Imperial Guardsmen. This is a universal paint scheme so these guys could be from anywhere in the Imperium. Are they from Necromunda? Are they from Cadia? Who knows? But what I can tell you is that they're very simple to paint and you only need a couple of paints to do it. One Guardsman takes about 20 minutes to paint and if you don't believe me, there's a seven hour stream above and if you've got the stomach, you can watch that and watch me paint 20 of these guys. Anyway, let's begin. These guys came from an eBay job lot, so they're in various stages of disrepair. Not a big problem, I mean they are the guard. Preparation stage, we base them, sprayed them with matte black, and then dusted over them with Corax white. If you're wondering what the basing is, it's just sand and PVA glue. You don't need to go out and spend loads of money on basing, special basing paint and special basing material. Just get two different two different textures of sand, mix them together, mix them with some PVA glue and water, and you're done. You saved yourselves millions of pounds. If you'd like a quick video of how to do that, let me know in the comments below. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to base coat the uniform with a field gray. I'm using coat to arms because that's what's available to me. You could use Citadel paints, you could use Vallejo paints, or if it's good enough, you can even use a craft paint from the craft store. You don't need to break the bank to have good looking miniatures. You could even speed this process up further by using a matte dark gray as a base coat and spraying that on. Me, I prefer not to. You'll notice that I'm being pretty slapdash with that brush. And the reason being is that the colors we're going to be using are just going to be black and also a skin tone. The skin tone we're going to be using is going to cover up that gray pretty easily and the black will go straight over it. So we just want to block him in as fast as possible. The next stage we're going to be basing his gun, his boots and also his shoulder pads in black. We want to make sure that black's nice and thin. We don't want it too thick and obscuring all the detail. Next stage, we're going to go in and base coat the face and the hands. I'm using coat to arms, suntan flesh. You could use any skin tone you want. Final stage is the metallic. So we're going to be going for silver, for the barrel, the bayonet, etc. Maybe his water bottle. And we're also going to be going for gold, any aquilas. So one on his head and also one on the gun. And if he's got that water bottle, there'll be one on there too. Here he is with his base coat colours and already I would say he's tabletop standard. As long as you keep those colours in the lines and you're careful with your brushwork, then why not? I'd be happy to play this. And if you have gone out of the lines a little bit, don't worry because the next stage is going to clear up a multitude of sins, especially for newer painters. Next stage is we're just going to give him a dunk in the wash. So I'm using Army Painter Dark Wash for the uniform and the gun and the face I'm going to go in with some flesh wash or maybe just some soft tone. At this stage you could dunk the whole model in Agrax Earth Shade or even Null Oil. That seems to be the fashion these days. The reason I like to keep the washes separate is that if I use the same colour wash on the whole model I think it's going to look a bit, little bit muddy. That's just my opinion. It would just be easier to coat the whole model in one wash. Again, up to you. So here he is before the wash is dried, and here he is after the wash is dried. Now, new painters, what you're going to find is just putting that wash on there is going to bring a lot of those details out. And you could call it here, but we're only 10 minutes in. There's a few more steps we could do to really bring this model out and take him to the next level. Next stage, I'm going to dry brush the whole model except the hands and except the face. And I'm just dry brushing that model with a little bit of that field grey mixed in with a little bit of light grey. Now we're going to dry brush that even over the shoulder pads, the gun and the boots, even though they're black. This will help later because we're going to be covering those areas with a black wash. And when we cover it with that black wash, you'll see that these highlights will come out 
naturally and look a lot more subtle than they do at this stage. And here he is with his dry brushing done. I'm sure you'd agree that the dry brushing does make a big difference, kind of softens the model a little bit and takes out some of the harshness of that wash. The second to last stage is that I'm going to use my coat to arms black wash. I'm going to put that over the gun, over the boots and also over those shoulder pads. Now I really like this coat to arms black wash because it does have a little bit of natural shine to it, which for me suggests leather. And we already highlighted these earlier when we did the dry brushing stage. So this black wash is going to bring the tone back down and suggest more black than gray. And the final stage of this model is we're just going to go in and we're going to bring up that skin tone again. So it's a mixture of coat to arms flesh and suntan flesh. Again, just substitute this for your Games Workshop paints or your Vallejo or even your craft paints. And also we're going to go in again, bring up the gold a little bit and bring up the silver a little bit. And then he's done. Now here he is with a few extra minor details. I've put a one on his shoulder pads. I'll put a little bit of blood on there as well. I gave him some eyes as well. But you can see here, these are all the paints and all the washes I've used. So we've only got seven paints and three washes. Now that is not half bad. Some of these paints as well, you could substitute out. I mean, we don't need that light gray. I mean, what is gray anyway, right? It's just a mixture of black and white. So I hope this shows that maybe people who are new to the hobby, and you don't need to break the bank to start an army. You don't need to buy all of those expensive Citadel paints. Use what you've got, practice, right? That's what's fun about this. You could use just these paints and paint an entire Imperial Guard army. I mean, what do you think? Here's, here's the 20 guys that are painted in one evening, along with two Sentinels. Now, I don't think that's too bad for a couple of evenings work, eh? The bases are just that cheap sand and PVA glue. Just used a bit of brown, a bit of wash, and dry brush those bases, and yeah, they're done. Ready for the battlefield. So what do you think of these guys? Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, remember to give us a like and a subscribe. The more you like, and the more that you comment on the video it does really help my channel to grow, and it'd be great if you could do me that little favor. And until next time, brothers, May the Emperor protect you through Nurgle's blights.